Hi, I'm Andrew Casey, President and CEO of Biotech Canada, the national voice for Canada's biotech industry and ecosystem more broadly. Andrew, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with us today. I'm really happy to meet with you and speak about biotechnology, which is a super important uh, topic and sector for Canada's future economy. So let's start with uh, a general overview of what you see as the economic and social value that the biotechnology sector brings to Canada, but also how you would describe its importance for our future economy. Thanks, Tim. It's great to be here, and thank you for this opportunity. I think it's important to look at biotechnology in the sector, not in the Canadian, through just a Canadian lens, but I think you have to look at it through a global lens. Uh, and it's important because when you think about what's happening in the world, we've got a planet that's sort of the population is expected to grow to 9 or 10 billion people over the next decade or two, and that brings with it enormous challenges. Uh, we're already dealing with a changed environment, a changed climate. The environment and climate will continue to change. Adding more people is just going to accelerate the pace of that. So we have to figure out new ways to live our lives, to lessen our impact on the planet. And biotechnology is one of the important ways we're going to do that. That's the type of technology and innovation that allows us to grow differently, to manufacture differently, to really heal and fuel uh, our, our lives. And that will not only lessen the impact on the planet, but allow us to be more efficient as a species. At the end of the day, the planet is what's ultimately not threatened. It's the species itself, the human beings that are really going to be threatened. So unless we do something to address where our trajectory is going, uh, we're going to be in, in some fairly significant uh, problems. This is not only Canada's opportunity. Other countries recognize this economic and social opportunity and are sort of supporting their local or domestic biotech sectors as well. But Canada does have a fantastic foundation upon to which to build. We've got a re great reputation for science and innovation. And if we can take that and really accelerate it, we're actually going to be at the forefront of developing some of those solutions that are needed for that global challenge of 9 billion, 10 billion people. Well, you just mentioned that Canada has a good base to start from. Um, let's expand on that. How would you describe the current state of biotech innovation in Canada? And what are your opinions or perspectives in terms of what we're doing well, but also the challenges we're facing as we grow the sector? The current state is, is really strong. And if you allow me, I'll go back just a couple of years and, and just before COVID really hit. And even then, it was doing quite well. There was a lot of great companies that were emerging across the country. And when you look at Canada's biotech ecosystem, you've got companies in every single province, really strong clusters in every single province that are developing sort of the support network and environment to sort of create those companies. And so we saw even before COVID, quite a few companies across the country growing in a very rapid fashion, attracting a lot of investment, attracting more talent. That was very encouraging. We've got a globally recognized expertise in doing good science and research. And, and that comes through clinical trials, which we're, we're notably good at. Uh, but also when you look at what's coming at our, our university system, the STEM programs that we've invested in, we're getting some very smart students coming out of the programs. Uh, and they're developing really good science. They're doing very good research. I think that's a, a, another key strength. Um, some history in the vaccine world. So we do have a couple of big companies that are doing vaccine work, the least of this Sanofi Pasteur in, in the Toronto area, Medicago in Quebec City. Uh, we've got some good biomanufacturing, BioVectra uh, and PEI is doing that, Resilience in Toronto. Vito Intervact is doing great work in Saskatchewan. So you see a lot of those types of companies. Uh, and then we've got some great research centers. There's Center for Regenerative Medicine, CCRM, out of Toronto. So regenerative medicine, cell therapies, and gene therapies. You've got Admari Bioinnovations, which is a national network that's pulling together all the uh, expertise, identifying and developing drugs. Also the developing the talent pool along with CASEL, uh, which is the Canadian Alliance for St Skills and Training in Life Sciences. So you're seeing some really fundamental pieces of this that are that are there and in place to build on. Uh, and I think that the, there, there's a good future just from that alone. There are some gaps. I, I think that uh, the government quite quite appropriately recognized that we could do a better job of being part of the manufacturing piece. So they're building that up uh, through their National Research Council and other investments. So that's going to be very important going forward as well. But for the most part, uh, we've got a very strong foundation upon which to build. Where we have not really succeeded is creating anchor companies, those types of companies that have a stickiness that stay here, that grow and attract more jobs. If you think back to the early days of technology, IT, when you had RIM, BlackBerry down in Kitchener, Waterloo, that's the type of company that we need to sort of establish itself in Canada 
grow to be a globally competitive company, which will attract more investment, more talent, more ideas. And that spins out more companies. And, and so getting those anchor companies, I think, is our next step where we've got to sort of do better and, and, and sort of really strive to get that. Because that if we get those anchor companies, then we really have created something special uh, that has built upon that foundation that's already been in place for some time. I'm confident in saying that the government's approach to this sector is going to shape it and define it in a very significant way, especially since it's it's a sector that touches on human health, on, on our food systems, and so on and so forth. Um, from your perspective, what is the policy approach that Canada needs to take in order to spur uh, biotech innovation uh, and also to improve our positioning as possibly a global leader in biotech and specifically in biomanufacturing? Great question. I mean, when you think about a couple of key things that allow for us to get to those anchor companies or sort of grow the sector, one of the, the key determining factors are what I would call hosting conditions. And hosting conditions are tax policy and regulatory policy. And those are really the tools at the government's disposal. They're the ones that control those. And so they play an absolutely essential role in really setting the conditions for the growth of the industry. Uh, and, and, you know, some of this obviously is on the industry itself. So we have to do a good job of developing the right science and going out and getting the investment and, and doing the right things that way. But when it comes to tax policy, uh, what allows companies to grow, to commercialize here, uh, government needs to look at that and be as effective and efficient as possible. I think government will play an important role in supporting the development of the talent pool as well. That's with their immigration policy. Uh, investing in our universities and, and training institutes. I, th I think they can play a, an absolutely essential role there. The regulatory policy framework. So when you think about rare diseases and the drugs that are coming forward for rare diseases, we need a pathway for those drugs. We need a, a pricing mechanism to deal with them. The use of real world evidence, the better use of development of data. Uh, I think those are really important features as well, as, in, in addition to the actual uh, approval. We saw how quickly that Health Canada was able to sort of take what was relatively new technology to them, the mRNA vaccines, and do a very thorough examination uh, to ensure for safety and efficacy and then approve those vaccines for Canadians. I think that that type of expertise is going to be needed in other areas, certainly as these new technologies come forward. And the last piece, I think, where we need to work together with government on it, but I think it's a government-led thing, is the development of a data set. We, we really uh, have no idea where the uh, industry is. We're sort of doing it anecdotally. We're measuring uh, what the industry is about now based on what we're hearing from different companies. The government used to measure it through Statistics Canada, uh, and I think we got to get something like that again, where the government invests in the collection and analysis of data so we know where we are and we know when we've gotten there. If we sort of think of this as a pathway, how do we know when we've reached the finish line? We need to be able to put data in place to actually measure that. And I think that's another really important piece of what government needs to do. I wish we never went through COVID. I never want to go through it again. That being said, having been in this sector through the COVID challenge, uh, there's been no greater opportunity to sort of talk about how important and valuable the sector is, whether it's vaccines and therapeutics and even other spaces, because the Canadian government sort of figured out, okay, we never want to go through this again, where we're sort of using duct tape and paper and wire to sort of put something together and put it up in the air. And so they're planning for COVID-40, COVID-50, you pick your year, you pick your whatever virus or healthcare challenge, and really starting to put the base in place where they're investing in biomanufacturing, growing our capacity for biomanufacturing, investing in the life sciences, putting together a life sciences strategy. And that's all really important because we are going to need to rely on this sector at some point in time, or at least we have to plan for it. Let's hope we don't, but we have to plan for it. In this sector, we have just good ideas. The good ideas reside for the most part on computers. So if we're not attracting the talent and the investment to Canada, those good ideas will go to those countries where the investment and the talent is. And so it is very mobile. We'll eventually get the finished product back, but we'll miss it on all the economic benefits of commercializing it here. Well, throughout your answers, you mentioned uh, that one of the strengths in, in Canada's biotech uh, sector, our industry, is our prowess in, in research and development. And, and as you said, that's well known. Uh, another fact that's well known is that we're not as great in terms of commercialization. And ultimately, when we're speaking about science that uh, impacts people's health, uh, that commercialization piece in terms of making real world impact, both on the health of uh, Canadian citizens, but also in terms of economic impact, 
uh, commercialization is key. So what can we, and I use we very broadly here, uh, address it to who you think is, is most important, but what can we do uh, to improve the way uh, Canada's biotech innovations are commercialized and have real world impact? I'll push back a little bit on that. I think we it's we shouldn't underestimate actually how good we are at the commercialization part. There's a lot of very good Canadian ideas that have been commercialized. The most recent, if you take the Pfizer vaccine for COVID, it was really actually Pfizer along with BioNTech out of Germany and Acuitas, which is a Canadian company. So their technology was absolutely essential. It was the lipid envelope that they developed that was essential to the delivery of the Pfizer's mRNA vaccine. So they, they were part of that. Um, you know, we've had a couple of fantastic exits in the form of companies. Clemencia uh, was sold to Ipsen for $1.4 billion. Anobia was sold for about a billion dollars. So when I think of commercialization, um, a lot of our products do get commercialized and are out there in the marketplace and helping people around the world. I think where we need to do a better job is to take some of those that are more realistic and turn them into Canadian companies where they actually anchor here and become sort of mainstays from an economic standpoint. We need more. We need more entrepreneurs. So we need some of these companies to sort of really get sticky, stay here, and then find ways to sort of grow the talent pool. We need to be reaching into a more diverse community, make sure that we're addressing some of the objectives that we need to put in place for diversity and inclusion. But when I talk to universities all the time and colleges all the time, um, when I look at the classrooms, the number of kids that are coming through from the different backgrounds, it's, a, it's absolutely fantastic. So I would say to the, the entrepreneurs, reach down and find those people that are really uh, showing great potential and, and mentor, teach, bring them up. We need more of those and, and sort of pass along all knowledge you've gained over all this experience because there's a lot of uh, scars that you build up as an entrepreneur in the biotech space. If you can pass along lessons learned to others, then that would be a huge benefit, I think, for the community coming up behind us. 